Okay, I just want to tell everybody we're recording <laughs> this call now, and because we can say hi to the kids, <laughs> because we can take this and we'll put this in the video this week. All right, so everybody kind of get so pretty. Get your best look yeah, on. Everybody get your good look. <laughs> you know, like I got to talk to some of your teachers over Zoom. I'm sure you know what that is. And we had a great conversation and we talked about how much we missed you. And we prayed together and it was so good. So they miss you very much and I hope you saw your teacher. I'm wondering this morning, what town or city do you live in? Tell me, shout it out. What, I can't hear you, say it louder. I heard Crown Point, Cedar Lake. I think I heard DeMott. I heard Portage and Hobart. You guys live in a lot of places. Well, when I grew up as a little girl, I lived in Griffith. Who's ever heard of the town of Griffith? Maybe some of you live there. And when I lived there, I played with my neighborhood friends. I rode my bike. I rode my bike to the little store that was like a couple blocks away. I rode my bike to an ice cream shop and every day I walked to school. And now I'm a grown up and sometimes I go back to Griffith and it's not quite the same. None of my friends live there anymore. The ice cream shop's not there anymore. Things have changed and I still feel though like it's my town because I grew up there. Well, that's what's happening in our story today. Jesus grew up in the town of Nazareth. And then when he became a grown up, he went away from Nazareth and kind of traveled in a bunch of different places. And now in our story, he's coming back to Nazareth, the town where he grew up as a little boy. So he probably feels really comfortable there. And it's the Sabbath day. And where do you think Jesus was going on the Sabbath day? That's right, he went to the synagogue. We've talked about that a couple times in some of our lessons. The synagogue is like church. It was a place where people went to pray and to worship God. And now when Jesus went into the synagogue, what do you think he did? I think you know by now because we've talked about this a lot of times. That's right. He started to teach the people. So when Jesus started to teach, he read from a scroll. Who knows what a scroll looks like? A lot of times back then they wrote important things on a scroll. And this is what the scroll said. We can read it in our Bibles in Luke chapter four. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set a liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That was an important message. And boys and girls, I want you to know that that very thing is in, written in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah. And why it's important for you to know that and remember that is because it was written in Isaiah before Jesus even came to earth. And now Jesus is reading it to say that it has come true. Do you ever read something that is in a book and you think, is that gonna come true? Is that real? This came true. That's kind of how we know the Bible is true because things that were written in the Old Testament have come true. So Jesus is saying it came true because he says that he came to proclaim the good news to the poor. He came to give sight to the blind, working his miracles. 
So when Jesus was done teaching, many people were so happy about what he had taught because Jesus was saying good things, true things. But a lot of people were not happy about what Jesus taught. They were angry at Jesus. They didn't want Jesus to teach those things. So they made Jesus leave Nazareth. They forced him out of the city where he grew up. Sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? Because if when I go back to Griffith, I wouldn't think anyone's going to chase me out of the city. But that's what they did. It tells us in Luke 4, uh, verse 29, And they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they could throw him down the cliff. What do you think Jesus did? Do you think he fought back? Do you think he was angry at them and he started to yell at them? No, that is not what Jesus did. Jesus, it says, but passing through their midst, he went away. He walked away. He just turned and walked away from all the angry people. Wow. That probably took a lot of courage. Jesus went to the town of Nazareth, where he had lived when he was a boy. Now Jesus was grown. He traveled all around teaching people about God. On the Sabbath day, Jesus went to the synagogue in Nazareth. The synagogue was a special building where Jews met together to pray, worship, and learn about the scriptures. Jesus stood up to read scripture. He unrolled the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and read, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has chosen me to tell good news to the poor. He has sent me to tell the captives that they are free, to tell the blind that they can see, to free people who have been treated badly, and to announce that the Lord's favor is on us. Then Jesus rolled up the scroll. He gave it to the attendant and sat down. Everyone in the synagogue stared at Jesus. Jesus said, today, as you listen to me reading these words, they came true. The people said good things about Jesus and they were amazed at him. Some of the people in Nazareth had known Jesus from his youth. Isn't this Joseph's son? They asked. Jesus said, no prophet is accepted in his own town. Jesus told the people about times when God used prophets to help people who were not Jews. He reminded them of Elijah and Elisha. When there was a terrible famine in Israel and no rain fell there for three and a half years, plenty of widows in the country needed help. But the prophet Elijah did not help the widows in Israel. Instead, God sent Elijah to help a widow in another land. And when Elisha was a prophet, many people in Israel had leprosy. They wanted to be healed, but Elisha did not heal them. Instead, he healed a man named Naaman. Naaman was from Syria, a country that hated God's people. The people in the synagogue were angry. They forced Jesus out of town. They wanted to throw him off a cliff, but Jesus walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Hundreds of years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah wrote about God's plan to send a Messiah. The Messiah would bring good news and redeem people who were broken and hurting. Jesus read Isaiah's words and announced that he is the promised Messiah. So now I want to play a game. I'm going to say a sentence and you try to figure out if it is true or false. If you think it's true, I want you to hold your hands like this, like a T. Like it's true, that means it's right. If it's false, like that is not right, Miss Melissa, what you just said, I want you to go like this, make an X. It's false, it's not true. Are you ready? Let's see how many you can get right. Here we go. The first question, or the first sentence is, Isaiah's words, remember Isaiah said, that's what Jesus read from the scroll. Isaiah's words, we're not about Jesus. Is that true 
or is that false? What do you think? Put your hands up. It is false. So if you guessed false, you are right. Isaiah's words were about Jesus. Number two, you ready? Jesus taught that he is the Messiah, that he is the good news. Is that true or is that false? What do you think? Get your hands up. Oh, some of you have it right. Here we go. It is true. That is what Jesus taught. He is the Messiah. He is the good news. Good job, everybody. Here we go. Number three. Jesus came to tell good news to the people who were hurting. Is that true or false? What do you think? Hurry up. It is true. That's right. Jesus came to tell the good news to those who were hurting. Number four. God sent Jesus to make more people rich. That's why he sent Jesus. Is that true or false? What do you think? Is that true or is that not right? Here we go. It is false. God did not send Jesus to make people rich. That is not right. Here we go. Question number or statement number five. Only good people are special to God. I'm going to say that one again. Only good people are special to God. True or false? What do you think? Get your arms ready in your right spot. True or false? That is false. Not only good people are special to God. That is not right. Last one. All people are special to God because they're made in the image of God. Is that true or false? What do you think? It is true. All people are special to God. You are special to God. Good job. How many did you get right? Did some of you get all six right? You listened really well. So here's what we've learned today from our, from our story. We learned that the whole Bible is true. This whole Bible is God's story. It's true. And it's God's story to bring us Jesus. We also learned that Jesus came to save all people, all kinds of people, all kinds of people who are different colors, who are rich, who are poor. It doesn't matter what kind of house they live in. It doesn't matter what town they live in. God came to save all people. Jesus is the Messiah the one who saves us from our sins. He is the good news. And we should value people like Jesus did. We should love people like Jesus did. In today's story, Jesus still loved those people who chased him out of the city. He still loved them. That's something I want you to think about. How do you love others? Do you love them like Jesus does? You're probably spending lots of time with your brothers and sisters right now and your mom and dad. Do you love them like Jesus loves them? Hmm. Do you put what they want to do before what you want to do? Sometimes do you get angry with them and you argue with them? And maybe you're playing with your neighborhood friends. Do you love them like Jesus loves them? I want you to remember that Jesus often put the needs of others first. Jesus served others. Jesus loved others. Let's remember to do that this week when we are with others. Let's remember to serve them and love them just like Jesus. And when, when you turn this lesson off, Maybe talk to your mom and dad or the people in your family that live in your house. Talk to them about how your family can love other people better. Maybe you can think of a project that you can do that will encourage somebody else that you know. Let's pray and ask God to help all of us to love others better. Our Father, we thank you for our lesson today. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus. 
We thank you that you sent him to die on the cross to save us from our sins. Father, we thank you for his example of how he loved others so well. I pray that you will help me. I pray that you will help all the boys and girls that are listening to love others like Jesus did. I pray they will serve others, they will be kind, that they will uh, think of ways to encourage other people. Father, we thank you for this day, and we pray that you uh, will give us a great day as we spend it with our families. We love you, and we're so grateful for how you love us. And we pray this in your son's name. Amen. Bye, everybody. See you next time.